Assalamualaikum. Me, Dr. Ifa Jahan, Assistant Professor, Department of Physiology, Eastern Medical College. Welcome all the students of ENC 16 for today's online teaching session. Hope you all are staying home and safe. So today my topic is hemodynamics. So before going to hemodynamics, you have to know what is dynamics and what we mean by hemodynamics. So dynamics means study of motion. And hemodynamics means the study of movement of blood through the circulatory system. And we have already known that main function of the cardiovascular system is to pump the blood and to circulate it through different parts of the body. There are two types of blood flow. One is streamline or laminar flow, another is turbulent flow. Streamline or laminar flow is a silent flow. So it moves parallelly. It doesn't produce any sound within the vessels. So here is the figure showing the laminar flow and turbulent flow. In laminar flow, the blood flows parallelly, but in turbulent flow, it has ups and downs. Turbulent flow is the noisy flow. When the velocity of blood flow increases above critical level, the flow becomes turbulent and it creates sound. The critical velocity at which the flow becomes turbulent known as Reynolds number. This is the formula to determine Reynolds number. Reynolds number equal to P multiply into D multiply into V divided by eta. So Reynolds number equal P equal to density of the blood, D equal to diameter of the vessels, V equal to velocity of the flow, and eta equal to viscosity of the blood. That means if density and velocity of the blood flow is increased, then blood flow is increased. Blood flow is determined by the five factors, pressure gradient, resistance, viscosity, diameter of the vessels, and velocity. Pressure gradient. Volume of blood flowing through any blood vessel is directly proportional to the pressure gradient. If pressure gradient is increased, then blood flow is increased. Resistance. Volume of blood flow is inversely proportional to the resistance. That means if resistance is increased, then blood flow is decreased. Peripheral resistance means the resistance offered by the blood flow in peripheral vessels. Viscosity of blood. Volume of blood flow is inversely proportional to the viscosity of blood. That means if blood viscosity is increased, then blood flow is decreased. And we have already known that blood viscosity is increased during polycythemia or any kind of dehydration. Viscosity is the friction of blood against the wall of the blood vessels. Diameter of the blood vessels. Volume of blood flow is directly proportional to the diameter of the blood vessels. That means if diameter is increased, then blood flow is increased. If diameter is decreased, then blood flow is decreased. We already know that during uh, the process of atherosclerosis, the blood, was, uh, blood vessels become narrowing and the blood flow is decreased. Velocity of the blood flow. Volume of blood flow is directly proportional to the velocity of blood flow. That means velocity of blood flow is increased and blood flow is increased. Velocity means the rate at which the blood flows through a particular region. So this is the figure which shows the interrelationships of pressure, resistance, and blood flow. Here, this is the blood vessels, and P1 is the one end of the blood pressure, and the another end of the pressure is P2. And resistance occurs as a result of friction between the flowing blood and the intravascular endothelium all along the inside the vessels. The flow through the vessel can be calculated by the following formula, which is known as Ohm's law. Blood flow equal to pressure gradient divided by resistance. That means Q equal to P1 minus P2 divided by R. This is called Ohm's law. This formula states that blood flow is directly proportional to the pressure difference, but inversely proportional to the resistance. That means if the pressure difference is increased, then blood flow is increased. If the resistance is increased, blood flow is decreased. Blood flow means the quantity of blood that passes a given point in the circulation in a given period of time. It is expressed in milliliters per minute or liters per minute. 
So average blood flow in an adult person at rest is 5,000 milliliter per minute or five liter per minute. This is also called cardiac output. So what is cardiac output? It is the amount of blood pumped into the aorta by the heart in each minute. So this is all for today's session. So these are the questions. What you have to do, you have to prepare the answers of these questions and note it down and through email you can send it to me. And these questions are frequently come in your professional examinations. So number one, what is the relationship between flow, pressure and resistance in the vascular system? Number two, state the physiological classification of blood vessels. So stay home, stay safe, and stay connected with us. Thank you.